Hey, welcome back. Good morning to all of our options traders out there. Well, I got an email from one of our traders asking a really good question. This comes up a lot. And he was asking, is there a formula that will tell you what percent your options price will move for a small change in the stock's price? Let's say if it rises a dollar or 1%. And in his email, he said, it seems like you should be able to take delta divided by the options price because the delta tells us by how much the options price will move. So if you divide those out, that should be your formula. And you have to be real careful with that. That will work only really under one condition. But that was the first mistake. And then he also assumed that that percentage would stay the same. And that's the second mistake, probably a bigger mistake. So what percent will your options price move? Is there a formula? And how do you use it? So let's go find out. As always, before we do, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated and helps to promote the channel. So let's start off with the percentage change. Again, traders often divide the options delta by the options price. So for instance, if you have a $100 call, let's say is trading for $229, you look at your broker's platform and it shows a delta of 51. So that's telling us Recall the definition of delta is saying that for the next small change in the stock's price, which we usually say is a $1 move, your option's gonna pick up this amount, 51 cents. So if we take 229 plus 51 cents, we should get roughly $2.80. Now I say roughly because there's gamma in here, which is going to bump it up a little bit more, but it should be roughly $2.80. So if the stock rises $1, Again, we should see an options price of about 280 or a bump of about 22.3%. And so again, this is what he was saying. If that's true, why can't we just take delta divided by the calls price? And that will also give us the same answer. And it does. We take 51 cents divided by 229 and we get exactly 22.3. So he was thinking that this is the formula to figure out the percentage change in your options price. And then he said that, or at least was thinking that this would stay constant, that you're always going to increase by roughly 22%. Those are two mistakes. And let's go find out the first one. Why is this not going to stay at 22.3%? And the reason is, if we look at a table of different stock prices, here's our $100 call with the option at 229 that we just saw. The pricing model says it has a delta of about 51. We take 51 divided by 229. This is what we just saw, 22.3. However, if the stock goes to 101, the call's price changes, but so does the delta. So now if we take roughly 58 divided by 283, we drop to about 20.5%. If the stock rises to 102, we're going to take a delta of about 64.5% divided by 345, and our percent drops again to about just under 19%. And you can see that this is looks like it's always starting to drop. Well, will we hit a floor somewhere? Well, we'll find that out in a little bit, but the first point to see is that this calculation of just taking delta divided by the options price is not going to stay constant. It's going to decrease as that option goes deeper in the money. So is there a formula that we can use? And the answer is yes, and we have to use what's called an elasticity formula. Now, these formulas creep up a lot in a lot of different disciplines, used a lot in economics, and the very thing they're trying to figure out is this problem. How much will the percentage increase be in something if something else increases, let's say, by 1%? That's what we call the elasticity. So if the stock rises 1%, what percentage change can I expect in my option? And to do that, we have to take the stock's price times the delta. And if you do that, think about it, it's going to show the equivalent number of shares. So if the stock is trading for 100 with a delta of 50, you are controlling at that moment 50 shares of stock. And that turns out to be important. We need to scale this by the stock's price. 
So we're going to take this stock price times delta, and that's what we're going to divide by the options price. So this concept of elasticity comes up a lot in options trading. Probably the most important use is for beta weighting. I've talked about that in a previous video. Beta weighting is when you're taking, let's say, a portfolio of options. You got a lot of different tickers. You got Microsoft and NVIDIA and Amazon, but you'd like to buy put options to protect the whole portfolio without buying individual puts on NVIDIA, Microsoft, Amazon, and so on. You'd like to just buy a handful of puts, but that mathematically protect the entire portfolio. And to do that, we need to find this connection between, let's say the S&P 500 is typically what we would beta weight it against, and the options. And that's where the elasticity calculation comes in. So there's a lot of different uses, but it can also just be used on a day-to-day -day basis in a practical way of saying, how much can I expect my options price to change? So the formula would look like this. We take the stock price times the delta. And again, that's showing us the share equivalent. How many shares are you controlling right now? And that's what we're going to divide by the options price. Now, notice mathematically, because we're multiplying in the numerator, I could take the stock price divided by the options price and multiply that by delta. I could also take the stock price times delta and just divide delta by the options price. And they're exactly the same thing. So this is the portion that that trader was looking at, delta divided by the options price. But as you're going to see, the reason that it's creating a problem is that we need to scale it by the stock's price. And that's where that formula is going to break down. It will work if the stock price is roughly 100. So regardless of which formula you use, the elasticity formula is showing that if the stock's price rises, let's say 1%, what percent will your options price increase? So if you come up with an elasticity measure of, let's say, 20, what that means is that if the stock's price rises 1%, your options price will rise 20%. That's what the elasticity is showing you. But remember, it's only good for that next small change in the stock's price, roughly a 1% change, and that number is going to decrease as that option continues to go deeper in the money. So to see that in action, why that's going to happen, let's jump over to an Excel spreadsheet and look at some examples. All right, so now into our Excel spreadsheet, and I've got over here on the left, the stock is at 100. I'm going to increase it by 1% to 101 and then increase it by 1% again to 102.01. I'm going to feed that into a pricing model, and I came up with 229 with the stock at 100, 283 with the stock at 101, and 345 with the stock at, let's just call it roughly 102. We generated different deltas, 51, 58, and 65. Now, in this column, we're looking at the elasticity calculation that I just talked about. We're going to take the stock price times the delta, and divide it by the call price. And I get an elasticity of 22.3. So again, that means if the stock makes a one percentage point move, that options price should pick up about 22%. And let's go ahead and try that. Let's just do equals this price divided by the beginning price. And there you can see it increased by a factor of 1.235, or about 23.5%. Now, again, it's not going to be perfect because we're technically making too big of a jump. We've got gamma in there, but it's going to get you really close. But notice over here that if we take this reduced formula that this trader thought of delta divided by price, it appears to be the same thing. Delta divided by price gave me 22.3. That's what elasticity gave us. It gave us 20 and a half here with the stock at 101, gave us 20.7 here with elasticity. 18.74 here, 19.11. So it seems to be roughly a good approximation, and that was part of his question. Can we just use this for a formula? And the answer is no, and the reason you can't, or at least the reason it appears to work here, is because the stock is 100. So all you're doing is saying that the percentage is either 22.3 or 0.223, but they're still coming up with the same number. 
But watch what happens if we go to, let's say, a stock price of 500. So now I've got a stock price of 500. I increase it by 1% to 505. Increase it by 1% to 510.05. Pricing model says the call prices are 1144, 1417, and 17.26. We get different deltas. But take a look at this. Notice that these deltas right here are absolutely identical to those. See, all you've done by multiplying the stock's price by 5 is you've shifted that bell curve from 100 to 500. But proportionally speaking, it's exactly the same. And that's why this call's price right here is exactly 5 times as much as this one. We've increased the stock price by a factor of 5. The call option prices will increase by a factor of 5. This is assuming it's an at-the-money option. So if we do the elasticity calculations, look at this. Look at those three calculations right there. Exactly the same as they are with a stock at 100. And that should be the case. Proportionally speaking, they should be exactly the same. But now here's where you're going to get into trouble if you think that the formula is delta divided by price. Look at this. Delta, remember it's the same as it is up here, 0.51 and 0.51. But now we're taking 0.51 divided by 1144, not 229. So see, this is going to get knocked way down. And in fact, that's going to be one-fifth of that value. So you can see that if you're going to use delta divided by price, thinking it's going to show you the percentage change in your option, it's only going to work if the stock is roughly at 100. Anything else is not going to work. And then the second problem is, is it's not going to stay constant. Because again, as that option starts going deeper and deeper in the money, we start approaching the stock. And as we approach the stock's price, we're obviously losing the leverage. So just to show that this calculation works as well, if we come up with an elasticity of 22.3 and the stock rises 1% from 500 to 505, let's do equals this number divided by that number, and we get 1.238, closer to 24%. But again, that's because we have gamma in here. We should technically be using much smaller percentage changes. You can see that if the stock is 505, and I come up with an elasticity of 20.67, if the stock rises 1% from 505 to 510.05, I should pick up about 20.67%. Let's take that price divided by that one, and we get about closer to 22. But you can see it's certainly much more accurate than thinking it's going to be 4%. So once again, if we were to carry this out and keep pushing this option deeper and deeper in the money, this elasticity measure is going to start approaching 1. So for example, here's a chart showing a wider range of stock prices. We're looking at the 100 strikes. So this blue line is always assuming the $100 call. But it's the $100 call with the stock at 90. It's 10 points out of the money. And here's the at the money, $100 call with the stock at 100. And up here is the $100 call with the stock at 190. So it's 90 points in the money, behaving basically like shares of stock. It's trading at parity, or at least very close. And then up here is the elasticity calculation. So notice when we have an out-of-the-money option, look at the elasticity. A 1 percentage point change in that stock's price is going to be a 45% change in your option's price. Now, again, you might think, hey, that's great. Let me go with the out-of-the-monies. But remember, they're also very low probability. Because if that stock doesn't get moving very quickly, time decay is going to start going after you. So be very careful about this leverage. There is a cost. And the cost is we need a fast, aggressive move in the underlying stock. But you can see with the stock here at 100, came back to about the 22% level that we saw. But the thing to notice about this graph is that as we push the option deeper and deeper in the money, we are starting to converge, flatten out, right here at 1. And that's another way of showing that your deep in the money options really have no leverage, or very, very little, because you're basically trading for the level of the stock, which is why it's called trading at parity. So I just thought that might be interesting to share. Again, I was just responding to an email, and I thought everybody in the group 
might benefit from this because when you understand the proper way to look at things and proper calculations, that's when you can make better decisions. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a Candlesticks and Technical Analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.